So the concept we want to look at in this uh, video is the concept of linear independence. So if uh, a set of vectors, uh, v1, v2, vr, let us consider this set of vectors. If this set of vectors, if none of the vectors within the set can be expressed as a linear combination of the other vectors, we say that that, that set of vectors is linearly independent. In other words, all these vectors that you see here, none of these, so for instance, if I were to take v2, v2 can't be expressed as a linear combination of v1 and the remaining vectors. So if I were to reduce the size, for instance, as an example, if I were to say uh, my set is v1, v2, and v3 only, for the sake of argument, then v1 cannot be expressed as a combination of k1, uh, k2, v2, plus k3, v3. Okay? Not possible. You cannot find... So it should not be expressible as a, as a linear combination of the other vectors. Similarly, v2 and v3 also cannot be expressed as a linear combination of uh, v1, v3, and here v2, um, v1. So they shouldn't be expressible as a linear combination of the other remaining vectors. Okay. Now, how do we test for linear independence? Well, there's a very simple way to do that. And that is, if we look at the equation... Uh, we set up this equation, k, k1, v1, k2, v2, plus up to kr, vr, equal to the zero vector, okay? And if the only solution to this equation is k1 equals k2, or the trivial solution, k3 equals kr equals zero. If this is the only solution, okay, if the trivial solution, the only solution... Okay, and to this equation, if this is the only solution to this equation, all right, we say that this, uh, the set S uh, is a linearly independent set. So it's a linearly independent set, okay, if the trivial solution is the only solution to this equation, then S is a linearly independent set, okay? So we call that, I'll call it, otherwise it is a linearly dependent set, okay? So linearly independent set, otherwise or else S is linearly dependent, okay? So that's the basic test. Um, that one has to uh, prove. So let's look at some examples. Let's say we have these three vectors, v1, v2, and v3, and we want to check if these are linearly independent vectors or linearly dependent vectors in R3. So in order to do that, we would of course set up the, uh, the equation, which is this equation, in fact, equal to the zero vector. And once we do that, we end up with, in fact, up with this so we end up with this equation and from this we get a system of course uh, as follows okay so we end up with this system of equations and that gives us in fact this matrix so it gives us this matrix and now all that remains is now remember this is a homogeneous system of equations a homogeneous system of equations doesn't we don't have the situation of no solution we have either uh, trivial solutions or we have um, infinity of solutions and trivial solutions only occur if the matrix the coefficient matrix in this case let's call this a okay is in fact invertible which means its determinant is non-zero so if we if the determinant of a so if the determinant of a is zero, we say that this is um, this uh, you know it's a linearly dependent set of vectors. Why? Because it'll have an infinite number of solutions, and the trivial solution would not be the only uh, only thing. So let's just check that. Well, the determinant of a, of course, turns out to be the determinant of a is equal to zero, which means this has infinity of solutions, um, uh, an infinity of solutions, in fact. So. We end up with, uh, if you were to solve the system, you would find that um, there are an infinity of solutions. Now, infinity of solutions means that this is a linearly 
linearly dependent set. Okay, so the, the set V1, V2, V3 is linearly dependent set. Okay, now I'll leave it to you to find out. Uh, it's, it should be simple enough to try to solve, uh, which is not really of interest right now. So we'll, I leave that as an exercise to you. Thank you. Let's do, look at a different example this time. Uh, so here we have three polynomials in um, basically in our uh, P2, and we want to see do these three polynomials form a linearly independent set? So of course we will start by setting up the equation uh, K1, P1, and I'm going to put underlines under these because usually we'd like to use bold, but we can't do that. So K2, P2 plus K3, P3. And this should be equal to the number zero because the uh, in this case the zero vector would in fact be the the number zero. But anyway, I'm going to put zero here like this. So that gives us. So this is our uh, equations equation for testing linear independence. Now here the way you proceed is it looks like one equation and it's not a matter of solving a quadratic. It's not x that you're looking for. It's the values of k, remember. So what you need to do is do a coefficient comparison. So you compare the coefficients of the constant term, which is the 1, for instance, and you see that that's k1 plus 5k2 plus k3, and it's 0 on the other side. Similarly, the coefficient of x minus k1 plus 3k2 and plus 3k3 okay is equal to zero as well and the last one just to show you here this is minus here plus three and uh, plus three now we'll have no x squared there's nothing here so it's going to give us nothing and here you have k2 multiplied by minus 2x squared so that will give me uh, minus 2k2 and similarly here you will notice okay minus k3 in fact and this is equal to zero Okay, so this is our coefficient matrix here. Let's call that A. Uh, and, uh, and again, we come to the same situation. If the determinant of A, okay, is equal to 0, um, in, fact, in fact, it turns out it is, in fact, 0, then we say that this, the set P1, P2, P3 is linearly dependent. So it is linearly dependent. Okay. Okay. Some important things to note. For instance, if zero, the zero vector, is in any set, uh, any set S of vectors, then that is automatically a linearly dependent set. Okay. So the presence of the zero vector in a set makes it linearly dependent. This is very important to keep because zero can be attained from anything. Just multiply it by the scalar zero. Another important property to keep in mind is that a set with uh, a set with only one vector, only one vector, vector is automatically linearly independent. As long as what? As long as that one vector is not zero. Okay. Uh, one vector is linearly independent if and only if that vector is not zero. If and only if that vector is not the zero vector. Okay, so this is important. This is a very useful little property, two very useful ideas to keep in mind. So let's look at this example. If we have uh, if we have here f1 is equal sine x squared, f2 is cos squared x, and uh, f3 is 5, and if I were to take 5 times sine squared x plus 5 times cos squared x, that's 5 into sine squared plus cos squared, which is 5. So that means that 5f1 plus 5f2 equals f3, in fact. So that means that this is a linear lean back. Now here, interestingly, for functions, we come across something very interesting, which is that the properties of the functions themselves sometimes can be exploited, like trigonometric identities, uh, for instance, uh, uh, of uh, of um, trigonometric functions, but those are particular functions like tr the trigonometrics. Okay, so functions can be related to each other, for instance. Now, if I were to change f3 to x for the sake of argument, okay, then there this would become a linearly independent set of vectors, right? Um, so, in, in this manner, um, 
you know, it, it, it is complicated. How does one check for linear independence of vectors? Well, there's a very nice way to do this, and that is that if we, uh, and that depends on the particular uh, functions. So if we have a set of functions f1, uh, f1, f2, fn, okay, so if you have a set of functions that are all uh, n minus 1 times differentiable, so they are n minus 1 times differentiable, so they are n minus 1 times differentiable on the interval minus infinity to plus infinity, that means we can differentiate them, then there is something very interesting we can do. So let me show you uh, what I mean by this. So if I were to take the linear combination of these two, these all these functions, I'd end up with this. Now here's the problem. And, and of course this is equal to zero, the zero vector in this case is the number zero. Now, if, uh, now of course I'm assuming here, I'm gonna replace f1, f2 by the functions so k1 f1 of x plus k2 f2 of x without an underline now because these are the functions themselves and that's equal to the number zero okay so now the, here's the problem that's one equation and that could be hundreds uh, of functions how do I solve such an equation well, what I can do is I can play a little trick, which is I can differentiate both sides of the equation, which means I end up with f1 and f2 dash. And since I've already assumed that all these functions are differentiable, in fact, n minus 1 times differentiable, I can keep doing this till I end up with uh, the n minus 1th derivative. of x plus k2 into, uh, sorry, this is f1, this is f2, n minus 1 to derivative x plus kn, fn, and n minus 1 to derivative of x. Okay, so if I look at this, now what I have, in fact, is a system of equations. So what I have is remember, I'm looking for k, the k's. So what I have is f1, and I'm going to drop the x's now just for. Um, sake of convenience and then I'm gonna have f1 dash so so this would be the coefficient matrix uh, if you look at it and of course I'm solving a homogeneous system of equations so let me call this a now what I've been what have we been seeing so far that if this matrix A, if the determinant of A is zero, okay, then we have linear dependence. However, if the, lin if the determinant uh, is non-zero, okay, we have linear independence, in fact. So what we actually have here uh, is that, uh, what we have here is that if the this, this determinant, in other words, determinant of A is zero, that means the determinant, which would be this. Um, so it would be, it would mean determinant, this determinant. And by the way, this by definition is called the Ronskian. Okay, it's called the Ronskian. Okay, uh, after Ronsky. So this determinant, if this determinant, in fact, was to be uh, zero, for instance. So if uh, determinant of A is equal to zero, is equal to zero, then F1, F2, Fn are linearly dependent okay and or else if determinant of a in other words the Ronskian is not zero then the set f1 f2 fn is linearly independent
So I just wanted to mention that it's an important result uh, for helping us to judge um, uh, various uh, uh, functions. For instance, uh, I'll show you a quick one here is if you had the functions 1, ex, and e to the 2x. Okay, if we had these functions and you wanted to check if they're linearly independent, you would set up the Ronskian, which is as follows, 1, ex, e2x, the derivative 0, derivative is ex, the derivative here is 2e to the 2x, 0, ex, and here it would be 4e to the 2x. You calculate this determinant, it turns out it's going to be, in fact, 2e to the 3x, you can check that yourself, and that is not equal to 0, uh, so therefore, uh, for all x, in other words, so therefore, um, we say that this is a linearly, linearly independent set. Otherwise, if you just had 1x and ex, you'd just be lost trying to figure out are they linearly dependent or independent. So we'll stop there.